we felt that this was an opportunity to come into the epicenter of creativity and see how we can raise our creative game. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. So how has your can been so far? So far, so good. We like to view ourselves as the hardest working company in the festival. We come here with a contingent of, of top talent so they can learn, get inspired, and help us raise the creative bar to the next level. If I'm not mistaken, you, you were one of the first kind of marketing organizations to actually come to Canada. That's right. It's a good numbers. That's right. That's right. We was almost, I guess, close to 20 years ago when we came here for the first time because we felt that this was an opportunity to come into the epicenter of creativity and see how we can raise our creative game. The focus is on creativity. Um, but the thing that we, as much as we are celebrating the craft, um, there is also the, the impact that it has. And so, you know, this is, this is creativity with a, with a goal in mind. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about kind of the, the, the role that creativity plays in your organization. What are you, what are you driving to achieve? In that? The products that we, that we offer to the world's consumers are everyday household and personal care, cleaning health and hygiene products that almost everybody uses. So all, for the, in a large way, uh, our, all of our all the consumers in the world are potential consumers. Um, and so what we view creativity as is a way to reach all those potential consumers, identify what each of their unique needs are, and then use creativity to be able to communicate what the product is, what it does, why it's better, how the, the, uh, tap into an insight that, uh, that that consumer will recognize, say, you're really speaking to me, and then be so effective that it makes the market bigger. It's creativity that grows markets. So when markets are bigger, that means what you're doing is you're, you're attracting more people to the market, uh, you're offering them a better performing product, uh, hopefully they will, use, they will use more of it, but in, in a responsible way, and when you grow markets, all boats rise. So that's, creativity is core to our entire superior uh, strategy on uh, a superiority strategy and delivering a superior consumer experience. So creativity that grows markets, that, that I, I like that a lot. You actually use the word insight, actually, in the lead up to that. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's true that the, um, for, for creativity, that the start point is a, an insight and a strong insight. I think one of the challenges, and you know, a lot of your brands are global brands, mm -hmm. and so trying to find an insight that resonates globally without it being the lowest common denominator is kind of a, a huge challenge. How do you go about finding insight? We, every market in which we compete on every single category, we are out connecting with consumers in their homes and stores, websites, e-commerce, wherever it may be. We even have a lot of connected homes that have measurement sensors, so we understand the actual consumption behavior, and then we have vast amounts of research data. But it's very, very focused on the local consumer. A good example of this. Um, in, in the dishwashing, automatic dishwasher, do you have a dishwasher? I do. Okay, good, all right, so how often do you use it? Every day. Every it's, day. It's my job in our house. You're, one <laughs> of the, you're, 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 you're perfect, so that's, uh, that's great. But not everybody does that. So 70% of, of the households in the United States have a dishwasher only, they're used only about two to three times a week. 20% of people don't use it at all. So what we tried to do is say, okay, why is that? Dug deep, they felt that dishwashers waste water. So we created a new idea called do it every night. Cascade, do it every night. <laughs> Run the dishwasher every night. You've, you're already on this. But that idea then uh, helped bust the myth that a dishwasher uses more water than hand washing. Turns out a dishwasher uses four gallons of water per cycle. Washing by hand, four gallons of water every two minutes. So they took that unique insight and translated it. They tried that insight over in the UK with Ferry Dishwasher, which is the auto dishwasher there. Very similar, 80% of people, two to three uses, uh, or 80% of households have it, two to three uses a week. The issue there was energy. Energy was a bigger issue because energy prices were up. People are very, very cognizant about energy and emissions. So, and what they focused on is not on water, they focused on uh, energy through turning to the short cycle. So turning to the one hour short cycle versus the three to four hours. And what they found is that 
product works better, and it also helps you reduce 33% uh, of your energy bill per, per use. So that became more appealing. Great example of different markets, similar idea. You want clean dishes. You also want to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's, that's, that's you know, potentially better um, for the environment. But they found it in a different way uh, through, each, through each country based on the insights. It's what, what I found fascinating about that insight, particularly as you talked about consumers in the UK and energy prices, that demonstrated an un, like, a sense of empathy Mm -hmm. Like an understanding of like, actually, this yeah. matters mm -hmm. to our consumers. I'm going to put myself in their shoes. Yes. How do you kind of ensure that like all of your marketing is, is as empathetic? We, we just, we spend, we really just love connecting with consumers. Our job is to make sure that we make their lives better a little bit every day. And, and, and it, is, it is one of the most noble jobs in the world when you think about it, because these are products you use every single day. And so you'd be amazed at the, at the passion commitment uh, that, that the, the people at P&G have for the consumers that we're serving. So then when we understand and then get these, extract these insights, we're like, wow, okay, this is great. This is really gonna make people's lives better if we do this. You know, one, one thing, um, I'll give you an example on Pantene. Pantene's a brand that uh, in Brazil, what they found is in Brazil, they weren't, they weren't appealing to a large part of the population. The, the brand was not doing very well. Um, and part of it is they looked at, that, at the makeup market and they said, makeup is 55% black and brown. We're not, we're, not being, we're not even representing the black and brown community in there. And we're not representing their hair. Curly hair in Brazil is a huge part. So what they did is they did a whole uh, campaign on, on really celebrating curly hair, all sorts of different curly hair. And it's, it's a beautiful campaign. And the business has gone up like that. In Europe, they, they've looked across and said, okay, we're gonna celebrate um, uh, Caucasian hair, uh, Asian hair, black hair, Hispanic hair, um, gray hair, uh, women in menopause. Uh, we're gonna focus on Lucy Edwards, who is a, uh, a uh, influencer who's vision impaired who has the feeling of hair. And then the LGBTQ plus community focus on the fact that hair is a unique and meaningful expression of identity. Yes. yes. And so we have this campaign called Hair Has No Gender. So deep empathy, same thing. And what it has done for that brand is that it has appealed to all consumers, each individual consumer in a unique way. It has built the brand and it has built the market. And that's that's what creativity is all about, and that's what human insight, empathy, that then allows you to serve all on each. So it's, it's insight, inclusiveness, yes. as well as impact. Yeah. All three of those things are what uh, you need to do to reset the bar to, to drive creativity that, dro that grows markets. So that, that, um, that hair example is, as you said, a great example of talking to all people, mm -hmm. but there is a unique relevance to each, and so each. you tap into exactly. that. There is a, uh, some work for, I think it's Old Spice, mm -hmm. the writer's room. Oh, yeah. It comes from, I'd love you to talk a little bit more about that. I feel like Old Spice is such a great example of a brand that was, was, was growing and doing well. Um, part of the problem, though, is that uh, the, when we looked at, when the team looked at the individual, each, each of the individual groups, they found, you know, we're not growing as among black men. Why is that? Why, why? And, and we have representation in our advertising, so why is that happening? When they dug deep and went deep into the insights, they found that, first of all, black men really care about their skin. Uh, and so it's, it's it deeply care about their skin, do a lot to take care of their skin. So it was this, this truer insight about them and that is true for everyone. And, and then what they, 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 they found is that, um, there's this tension between men and women, in some cases, on, on using your personal care products or any product. So that, that could create some creative tension. And then they looked at the humor and they said, we need to make this humor more sophisticated and more real. So black men and women look at it and say, okay, they understand that. So that's where they got Gabrielle Dennis, um, uh, Dion Cole, Millicent Shelton, who's a, who's a, a black, uh, director and created the men have skin Two campaign 
and that was that was a breakthrough. And then they, they've worked with Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart on Heartbeat Studios, LOL, or Heartbeat Media, LOL Studios, to create these funny sketches. Uh, and the writer's room was, was a brilliant one because it was one of their writers whose, whose um, uh, girlfriend had been using his, <laughs> his Fiji uh, scent product and he was angry about that. So they did a role play and, um, and it was just, you know, you, you look at this and you, it's so funny, but the, the product is woven into this um, perfectly. So you remember Old Spice, yes. but, um, and it, it's been very, very successful. It's interesting. We often talk about representation as sort of on a hierarchy because it's interesting. You, you talked about there was black men in the advertising in the ad. spice. And I, I, I remember it, but like exactly. that's just the base level. What you with the writers' room, you kind of went into this understanding of the culture, correct? That's nuanced that the kind of as a consumer. That's I was it. like, you get it. You start <laughs> with representation, good start. Then you need to go to relevance, which yeah. is insights and nuances. Then you go, when you create then that work, which has, is, is very is nuanced and it's funny, it's funny to everyone, very, very true to the black community. And then, then put it on, on Heartbeat Studios, that's resonant advertising on, or sorry, re relevant advertising on resonant media. You have the recipe for really good growth. So I, uh, there is one campaign that I'd love to just um, touch on. Mm -hmm. you, you, two of the great examples, but um, this one was around period protection. Yes. And I, I've worked in the category, so uh, I feel partly responsible for some of the myths uh -huh. and misinformation that you were pushing up against. But yep. I, I'd love you to just talk a little bit about that work, because I found it really culturally relevant. Well, it, uh, period protection is a, is a big market, big opportunity, but it is fraught with, with misinformation and myths, and it's different in every country. So if we go back again to our earlier discussion about insights, go to India, for example. In India, one out of four girls miss, miss school. Um, one out of five girls miss school. 23 million girls a year miss school be, during their period. And a lot of that is due to lack of information, lack of education. So the creative idea uh, that the team put together was let's educate not just the girls, let's educate their moms. Because they're, what they learned is that if, if the moms aren't educated, then the girls won't be educated and they won't go to school. So they created this program called, this, this um, uh, film and, and program called The Missing Chapter. So it was a missing chapter that wasn't in the education system, that wasn't in the books that talked about um, uh, menstrual and period protection and uh, menstrual education. Beautiful film. Um, really amazing, very, very, very powerful. Uh, won a Grand Prix last year. And uh, importantly, it, it, uh, it's up for a Creative Effectiveness Award this year. But, and we love that because it grew the market. It, it changed the, the, the nature of the education in the system. Um, and they even changed the education system. They put the chapter in. So that's a very impactful uh, um, a piece of piece of work. The other one is is always always is a is a brand. There's this, this product called FlexFoam that is the period the period protection brand made for anybody and everybody because the insight, particularly in Latin America and the U.S., is that the wrong size pad is often used based on body shape, size, form. So you need to help people understand um, how how to be able to use the right size pad for the best protection. And one of the uh, most amazing. Uh, examples of growth in terms of, of, uh, of education was Tampax because tampons are a high performing product and highly misunderstood. So we worked with Amy Schumer to do some very funny education. I would ask you to go take a look at it, particularly look at, at, at one which we showed, which is the gynecologist visit, where you, which you just go through myth after myth after myth and, and it helps people overcome the myths in a humorous way because yeah. the team says if we can laugh about it we can learn about it and it's so important because these are tough subjects you know it they're, they're tough subjects and taboo in many places so you have to find very creative ways to be able to overcome them and it's been been great for this business and the team is amazing it's funny i i uh, i used to many years ago i, I worked on the launch of you by kotex which oh is when yes. I was, yes oh my you and you, we went right at the myths oh and you did a great job i it was i have to tell you you did a great job on it, that that was, was really good and it was because i was literally a father of a daughter who was 
literally about to start a bridge. So I was like really personally invested. Yeah. But the funny thing is, I learned so much yeah. about millennial girls and uh -huh. Gen Z girls and periods. And then my wife calls me, she's like, Safi, you start a period. I was like, I am so ready. Am I ready? <laughs> I literally, I left the office, I ran home, and I got back and I was like, Safi, I, I understand. And she went, I don't want to talk about it. And just slammed the door. <laughs> and that course. was the end of that. Well, like, exactly. All that knowledge, I couldn't use it. Anyway. I mean, it was that, that's why if you look at the Amy Schumer um, gynecologist, it's it's just great. Yeah. She just goes, she just knocks every one of them down. Yeah, yeah. In, in a hilarious way. So interesting. What, what you're articulating, and I like it that you actually didn't use the word, but it was purposeful. Like there was purpose behind mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it grew the business. Yeah, and it's an important point because what. What I think brands, where they can, what they can do is they can make a difference by focusing on what they do best. And what they do best is in a superior offering, a superior product, how it's better, how it works, education, makes it better. So what it does is it improves lives by just delighting consumer on an everyday product and it grows the market. That's, that's what we do. And it's, it's a heavy lift for, for household care and personal care products, very heavy lift. But one of the biggest creative challenges is to, is to, is to make these kind, this kind of work interesting and useful and grow the, and grow the business. But that is what we do, so what we one, try to do at least. <laughs> that's perfect. One, one last question. I'm, this is about looking forward, but I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in technology mm -hmm. because there's a lot of that conversation. But, but going back to creativity, and I, I'm, I'm curious about kind of, if we think ahead to Cannes in 10 years time, like what would creativity look like? What, what, what will our canvases be? Ha, huh. I think our canvases will continue to grow like they have in the last 10 years. They will continue to expand to different ways that we can engage, engage with people. And, and, and who knows, based on the fact that technology exponentially grows every 18 months, it's going to be some amazing ways in which, in which we can engage, probably going to be far more experiential, you know, far more, uh, far more useful, far more precise, far more individual. But the components of what makes successful creativity will be the same, in my view, and in our view, because they've been the same for hundreds of years, or at least for at least 150, 187 years, which we, we've been around for. Because, because you need to understand that consumer insight, what's the job that some, we need to do for, uh, that, that a product needs to do? What's the problem that needs to get solved? What is the product? How does it work? How does it make it better? Why is it better? And then what's the benefit that you receive? And I think those components will stay the same. You just need to apply them to the different parts of the creative canvas. Yeah, no, I like that. That makes a lot of sense. The, the approach is consistent. The, the execution will evolve. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Th thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Seth. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm.